Hi, my name's Arden. I'm here to get again today from the Saltwater Edge in Middletown, Rhode Island to talk to you a little bit about fluking. We mentioned uh, some of my tricks for bucktailing fluke in our last fishing report, and I wanted to go over them in detail today. First of all, you can see a variety of the items I mentioned today. We've got a selection of bucktail jigs from Blue Fog Bucktails, Andrus, as well as an example of some of the teaser rigs I was talking about from companies like Tsunami and Redkill. Also, like I mentioned, you're going to want to have something like a quality spool of fluorocarbon leader. Of course, any quality mono will work in a pinch. And most importantly, something that we didn't cover was the rod. Real quick, after I, was, after I had that last presentation, I had a couple guys come in and say, hey, we've been fluking, we tried your rigs, we're pulling a lot of hooks. And I found that the issue was is they were using their same fluke rods. The problem with these standard fluke rods is they're pretty stiff. And when you're doing something like bucktail, you tend to rip the hooks right out of the fish. For that reason, even if I'm fishing deep water, you're going to want to look to a relatively light outfit. A more flexible rod is going to make sure that you cushion that hook set and you don't end up pulling hooks because again, it's a very aggressive way of food fishing. That said, any quality reel will do the trick, but let's look at bucktails again. Now I mentioned a couple of the classics, but I wanted to show one other. And that was to use a plain lead head jig like something from Kaylin's and to tip that with a curly tail grub like you might find in Gulp. Also, when it came to the uh, tweaking of rigs, I wanted to just go over the, uh, a little adjustment that I made to the Blue Frog Deep Diver jig heads. As you may have noticed, these initially come with a swing hook attached to them. A swing hook is a hook that's molded right to the lead but has a pivot point so that it can kind of move around. While this in itself will help get you more, hit, uh, help keep fish from pulling the hook, I like to do a little something different just to increase my hookups and also to make sure that I drop fewer fish. To do that, what I do is remove the swing hook then take a piece of heavy 40 or 50 pound mono, which is then tied to the eye on the hook that's now left barren. Then take any standard hook that you would use for a typical fluke rig. In this case, I'm using a four-aught gamagatsu and try and tie it real close to the jig head itself. What this is gonna do is give you a little bit more play between the jig head and the hook and also set the hook back a little further on the rig. This serves two purposes. One, it means that even if you're jigging quite aggressively and you get a solid hook hit from a fluke, that you don't end up ripping the hook right out of its mouth. Two, it also acts as almost a semi-stinger. With this hook now hanging back, as you can see, about three inches behind the jig itself, when that fluke hooks, hits, instead of hitting the front of the mouth and missing the hook, it's gonna hit that and have this jig all the way back in its jaw. This way, even if you set the hook quite aggressively, you're not gonna miss them. There's a ton of things you can do to improve your odds with fluke. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at the shop or stop by. By the way, they're great eating. One of my favorite ways to have them is pan fry with a little panko and a little tartar sauce on the side. Tight line, guys.